That is a bummer for me that he's choosing to do that right here. A little odd. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we're going to talk about putting because there's a storm brewing. And no, I'm not just talking about this possible tornado coming to our area tonight, but rather the storms you're gonna be bringing to the basket when you learn how to push putt. When it comes to disc golf, there are two traditional types of putting, and that is spin putting and push putting. Spin putting is where you're going to use your wrist to enact a lot of spin onto the disc, and push putting is much more of like a pendulum type swing to enable the disc to go up in the air, float, and then come down into the basket. Both have their pros and cons, but for beginners, I usually recommend a push putt because one of the biggest pros is that when you miss, because unfortunately, no one makes every one of their putts, your miss still has you landing pretty close to the basket. Knowing that we prefer a push putt, we first have to realize where the power comes from in our push putt if we really wanna have success out there on the course. And for that, I think there's three distinct areas. The first is our legs. Beginners can often trick themselves into thinking that a lot of power in disc golf comes from their arm, and maybe if you're like super swole it is, but that is certainly not me. So we can use our legs to generate a ton of power, not only on our putts, but on our drives as well. By shifting our weight back and forth through our legs, it allows us to access a ton of power within our throw. But if that doesn't feel like enough, there are some smaller options we have to generate power, and those come from supination and the finger pop. Supination is the act of taking your palm and turning it up towards the sky. This swivel or swing creates some power and momentum for the disc to travel through the air, not only with some spin, but it also gets the putt to be pretty flat as well. The finger pop is the extension of our fingers while we're supinating, which causes the disc to fly forward, spin, and just get in the basket. So we've talked about where power comes from in our push putt, but knowing and doing are entirely different things. So in order to help us take that next step in learning how to do a push putt, well, we're gonna try a little unconventional method. And for that, we're gonna need some eggs, preferably hard boiled because ain't nobody trying to get egg all over themselves while we're trying to get birdies. Because if you can toss an egg properly, odds are you probably know how to toss a proper push putt as well. If you don't happen to have eggs or a person really to toss with, finding something small and compact is going to work just as well. We're gonna let these hard boil a little bit longer and then we're gonna head to the field and show you what I'm talking about. We wanna take a quick moment to talk about today's video sponsor, Disc Dot. Disc Dot is the putting aid of choice for some of the best putters on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. And it's easy to see why. This simple target can easily be moved around the basket to help you practice a variety of putts depending on what you're trying to work on. The dots come in a multitude of vibrant colors and have some great customization options to help you support some of your favorite players out there on the tour. So if you're looking to gain an advantage on the putting green, look no further than disc.usa.com and you can use my code RCDiscGolf at checkout to not only save yourself some strokes, but save a few bucks as well. Say it with me, putting is easy especially when you have disc dot on your side. So we're here at the course, we've got our eggs. What do we do next? I want you to toss them, but don't scramble them. That gets a lot messier. For this exercise, you're gonna need two things, eggs and a friend, preferably one that you trust. You and your friend are gonna stand about 10 to 12 feet apart from each other. And I want you to take this egg and toss it to one another, but here's the trick. You aren't allowed to open your hand up and pop those fingers when you toss it. You simply have to hold the egg curled inside your hand and just try to yeet it to a friend. You'll notice that it's pretty difficult to do this unless you like jerk and stop your hand suddenly to get it to eject out and then there's not really any control to it. So it's just kind of random and you're hoping maybe I'll smack this egg into my friend's face. But what if there was an easier way? You'll notice when you naturally toss the egg, even amongst your hands, that you're gonna kind of pop your fingers open and pop that wrist open. And that's what causes the egg to simply fly up in the air. You can even notice this if you just toss the egg up to yourself. Popping the fingers gets this to go much higher and out of my, I'm gonna need another egg. I want you and this friend to now start tossing the egg back and forth to one another, but using your fingers and sort of popping them as you toss. You'll notice how much more power this gets you on the toss and how much easier it is to not only get the egg to your friend, but how much more accurate you become. You can get further and further away from each other as you get more comfortable, but I don't want you going anywhere farther than about 22 feet. If you wanna take this a step further, you can start your wrist sort of up like this, and when you toss it, you can add in that supination by turning that palm upward on your throw as well. It's going to go a lot better for you, I promise. Now, once you guys get super comfortable with your egg toss from about 15 to 20 feet, I want you to take that egg and I want you to sub it out 
for a putter. Scoot closer back to about 10 feet and start tossing this putter back and forth just like you were doing your egg, but you're not trying to change how you were tossing that egg. The same supination and finger pop are still going to apply as you throw the disc. If you're finding this to be more difficult than the egg, well, that's because it is. But there are a couple of things you might be doing which cause this to be even more difficult than it is actually supposed to be. The first is having your fingers extended too far on the disc. Remember that power is generated from the finger pop. So if our fingers are already fully extended, it gets a lot harder to pop them out to give energy and spin to the disc if we're, like I said, already popped on the disc. The quick solution is to take these fingers and curl them in just a little bit so that they're more bent so that you can extend those fingers and get some pop that way. The second is understanding supination on the disc. Lots of people are tempted to hold the disc very flat, but you'll notice that when I do that, my palm is already facing the sky. I can't supinate much more if I'm already in that motion or in that position on the disc. The easy way is to turn the disc down a little bit so that I can give some pop to the disc, which is going to add power and spin just as easily. I'd warn you from having the disc all the way lean down because that also gives too much grip and then you're like having to hang on to the disc for dear life. Just a happy medium. That's my suggestion. Hopefully you're getting a lot more comfortable playing catch with your friend at anywhere from about 10 to 22 feet. And when we go beyond the 22 foot marker, we definitely need to make sure that we're using our legs. But what you didn't realize is that I was actually tricking you into practicing the number one tip that I give people who are struggling to find success on the putting green. You're just playing catch. I firmly believe that if you can make all of your putts 20 feet and in on every round that you play, you are going to gain so many strokes on the people you play with, especially if they they are also beginners. Often this cylinder of terror can cause us so much fear and anxiety when we step up to it as we think to ourselves, oh my gosh, what if I don't make this? My family will disown me. All of these friends are going to leave me and, and why do I even spend all this time out here? When in reality, all you're doing on a putt is simply playing catch with the basket. In fact, if I was standing 20 feet away from the basket and you pulled my disc out of the basket, you wouldn't think twice about how to get the disc to me because you're just playing catch. And yet coming in the opposite direction, it's like everything changed for no reason at all. So all I've done in this video so far is teach you how to generate power on your game of catch. And what you're going to do is I want you to imagine your partner in the game of catch, instead of standing right next to the basket, they're just simply standing right behind it. I want you to imagine that the basket is just simply in the way of your game of catch. If you give the disc enough power to get to a friend standing on the other side of the basket, there are very few chances that you're going to throw it low and into the cage. So the next time you find yourself staring down this cylinder of doom for a terrifying putt, just think, come on, it's just a game of catch. There are so many amazing teachers out there trying to help you improve your game, and I am just so grateful that y'all choose to still continue to support this channel and watch these. It might seem silly and basic, but I truly hope that at least one of you watching, thinking about putting as a game of catch, is going to help you start draining those putts that you've always wanted to make. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have an amazing rest of the week and that yeah, these storms aren't heading your way. So I'm gonna head back to my house where it's safe. But for now, I'll leave you with the birdie.